When will Bitcoin achieve mass adoption? When will cryptocurrency achieve mass adoption? Five years from now? Ten years from now? Is it even possible? That's what I want to talk about today. You guys are going to like this video. Welcome back, everybody, to Altcoin Daily, where we bring you daily videos on everything going on in the cryptocurrency community. Uh, and if you guys appreciate our daily crypto content, do me a favor, give the video a like. It helps us grow as a channel. Uh, anyways, let's get into it. Um, really excited to be talking about this today because this is a very important question to us as investors and us as cryptocurrency enthusiasts. You know, we believe that cryptocurrency adoption is right around the corner, but when will that corner be? And first of all, let, let's just define what I mean by cryptocurrency adoption because I'm not talking about Bitcoin getting to 50K or 100K, and I'm not talking about Ripple, you know, 10Xing. What I'm talking about is actual adoption, where it becomes more of the norm for us to go into a retail store or us to pay online with cryptocurrency, where that's more of the standard, just like how the internet, it took some time an email, it took some time for it to really become ingrained in society. And now the internet, email, that is the normal, that anything else is worse than what we have now with the internet and email. But there was a time when not a lot of people use the internet, not a lot of people use email. And that's actually where I want to start with this, comparing cryptocurrency to the internet and email. So sometimes it seems like everyone is talking about Bitcoin yet less than 1% of the world owns any. Cryptocurrency today is similar to the tech boom in 1994. And by the way, guys, stay tuned for the end of this video because I'm gonna be sharing with you Andreas Antonopoulos. He's a big time Bitcoin guy, uh, tech investor, very smart guy. Uh, I'm gonna be sharing with you a short video, three minute long video about him talking about how long it's going to take until mainstream adoption is hit. So very interesting stuff. But anyways, let's start here with email, because like I just said, right now, right today in 2017, 2018, less than 1% of the population knows anything about Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, which is very similar to back in 1994, when even less, even fewer people, less than 1% still knew about the internet or email. Very interesting stuff. I mean, do you guys remember? I know I remember when, you know, it probably wasn't until 1995, 1996 that I really started using email. I think my first email uh, address was like uh, paintball ace or something like that. Anyways, uh, it's interesting to note, though, that although I didn't start using email until 1996, email as we think of it today was invented in 1972. So it actually took a little while for things to get adopted. So for 15 years, email was mostly a toy for engineering hobbyists and a small number of scientific researchers. Huh, that's kind of like just like today where Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, they have a strong community, but the question is, are we gonna be able to branch out? And it wasn't until the late 1980s that email began to enjoy meaningful commercial use, and not until the mid 1990s for widespread retail use. To make the jump from hobbyist to commercial and then average retail user, it required three factors. So there's three things that email had to do to actually gain mass adoption. Very interesting. And as we go over each of these, I think they're very similar to what needs to happen with crypto with cryptocurrency. So the first thing that needed to happen is the technology itself had to be developed to a point that it was standardized, stable, and had features valuable to the user. Second, user interfaces had to be developed to make email approachable to non-engineers. And third, this is interesting, the user base had to grow over time. The more people that use email, the more valuable it is to each user. And this virtuous cycle of adoption takes time to play out. So that third one is pretty interesting because it says, the user base had to grow over time. The more people that use email, the more people that use email, the more valuable it is to each user. And that's just like cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. If you, me, and all of our altcoin daily community here, if we're the only ones who are using cryptocurrency and using Bitcoin, guess what? That's not adoption. It's not nothing. It's not going to be worth anything. And the same as email. If those hobbyists were the only people using email back in the day, and that's how it stayed, email 
would have zero value. Interesting stuff. Let's jump jump over. Let's try and seek actual answers. Because at the end of this video, I do actually want to put a time frame. Five years, 10 years, 20 years. How long is adoption going to take based on how long it took for email and some other things we'll get into. We're actually going to put a number on how long it's going to take for uh, adoption to occur. So let's jump over here. When will Bitcoin achieve mass adoption? Is it even possible? Mass adoption is a frequent topic of discussion among the members of the Bitcoin community. There's virtually no disagreement about the fact that Bitcoin would eventually go mainstream and that it would be a great thing. However, there are many wildly differing opinions out there when it comes to the question of how mass adoption can be achieved. What factors are hampering the adoption rates right now and whether Bitcoin can become everyday money at all? By now, it's evident that the prophesized mass adoption has yet to come, that Bitcoin isn't going to die anytime soon, despite what some detractors would have you believe. The question then becomes, when is global recognition realistically possible and what has been preventing it so far? The factors impacting the rate of Bitcoin adoption can be roughly divided into three groups, technological, utilitarian, and psychological. Let's take a look at what progress has been made in uh, these three directions so far and what remains to be done. So we're going to take a look at how far Bitcoin has come, yet how far it still has yet to go to be a uh, competition for you know, the main money, you know, B Visa, MasterCard. We're going to go through this real quick because I really want to get to this video, but just to compare Bitcoin to Visa and MasterCard and Fiat, we know that technologically speaking, Bitcoin can only handle three to seven transactions per second. It has a bloating problem. We know that, especially compared to Visa's 56,000 transactions per second and money's unlimited transactions per second. And, you know, now the past year or so, we're finally seeing all these other altcoins and the talks have become when is the flippening going to happen? When is something else going to gain more value and have a bigger valuation than Bitcoin? That remains to be seen. For the time being, Bitcoin is still number one. Second thing, utilitarian, the level of acceptance in shops. This is very similar to the email thing that I just went over. So uh, as far as level of acceptance in shops, Bitcoin has up to several hundred online shops that accept it and potentially more than 9,000 physical merchants. I mean, that is something. You go back just a few years ago. Bitcoin was only invented in 2009. You go back just a few years ago, people weren't accepting it, all, accepting it at all. And then, of course, Visa, almost every online shop accepts it. And more than 4 million merchants around the world accept it. And every, obviously, everybody accepts fiat currency. So that's where Bitcoin or one of these altcoins, that's where they have to go. And my question to you guys is, do you think Bitcoin is going to be the one to take us there? Or are you guys more of a Bitcoin cash? kind of person or Litecoin or Cardano. Next, know-how barrier to entry. So like, let's take Bitcoin. There are many services which focus on simplifying the experience for the first time user. As of 2017, we've come a long way. You know, before, wow, well, what the heck? Before uh, Coinbase uh, was around, very only basically uh, tech people could buy Bitcoin. Uh, and now, you know, there are many ways to get involved with Bitcoin. Visa and MasterCard, there's a very low threshold. Most payment systems are designed for huge audiences and are very simple. And of course, fiat money, everybody uses it. And the final thing, uh, and we all know this to be true, is psychological. There are many misconceptions about Bitcoin, which remains unaddressed. Basically, this is saying there's just a lot of still people are scared. There's still a lot of FUD regarding is Bitcoin going to, you know, should I invest my energy into thinking about Bitcoin, is it even going to become a thing? And that's where we as early adopters come into play because we're taking that risk. And to sum up this article, because this actually puts a little bit of a, this actually says how long they think that it'll take for Bitcoin to gain mass adoption. The final verdict so far, it is clear that there are many hurdles left on Bitcoin's way to mainstream right now. And some will be more difficult to overcome than others. Among the most critical issues are the transaction scaling problems, the relatively high know-how barriers to entry for users, and a distorted public image. However, the prognosis seems to be optimistic. Both the number of daily transactions and the price of Bitcoin have steadily grown to quite substantial levels despite all the setbacks and the crashes on the way. 
it is clear that there is enough determination and enthusiasm in the Bitcoin community to maintain the current positive dynamic into the future. Maybe it's more prudent not to count on a single powerful breakout, especially since such bursts have led to, to the no less speculator uh, crashes in the past. Rather, the continuation of the current steady organic growth could be what Bitcoin needs. Check this out. It is quite likely that five or 10 years, half the world will know what Bitcoin is and we won't even notice how we got there. Huh. It is quite likely that five or 10 years, half the world will know what Bitcoin is and we won't even notice how we got there. I mean, yeah, in order for Bitcoin to gain the mass adoption that we're talking about, it's not going to come with, you know, one big pump at the end of the year. It's going to come, you know, slowly and steadily. And according to this article, it's going to take five to 10 years to do that. Now, we just saw, according to, uh, you know, to comparing this to email, that email was invented in the 70s, didn't really gain any traction until the late eight, until the late 80s, 15 years later. And it wasn't really until the 90s that every single person got an email account. So that took what? 15, 20, almost 30 years for email to really, I guess not quite 30 years, you know, about 20 years to, for email really to gain adoption. Now they're saying, you know, Bitcoin's already been around for what, nine years? So maybe it'll take the same amount of time, total of 20 years. Anyway, how I'm going to end this video today, this guy right here, uh, Andreas Antonopoulos, if you guys don't subscribe to his channel, it surprised me that he only has uh, 1,000 or 150,000 uh, subscribers because honestly, this guy is super smart guy, super intelligent, and just an all-around enthusiast in Bitcoin. He's a tech guy, so he has many, many great talks and interviews and lectures on his channel. Definitely subscribe to this guy. Definitely like his video. By the way, if you find value in today's video, give it a like. But he is going to give his predictions on how long it's going to take until mainstream adoption. And he's going to compare it to how long, uh, how long, basically he says, we need to look at the previous money revolutions. So he first says, you know, there was a time when we used chunks of gold as money. And then we switched to paper money. And that took 400 years to gain adoption. And then there was a time where, you know, we switched from paper money to like credit cards. And that took about 50 years to gain adoption. So how long is it going to take for Bitcoin to gain adoption? He says that he believes Bitcoin will gain adoption in less than 15 years, maybe 20 years. Anyway, check it out. How long will the adoption reach out until you have mainstream adoption? Well, um, let's look at the previous revolutions in money. In the 16th century, there was this radical proposition to replace gold with gold certificates written on paper. And if you think people find Bitcoin weird, imagine the time when they told them gold is no longer the money, bits of paper are. They're like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> so that idea was so radical, it took 400 years until it became broadly deployed in mainstream society. Right? Um, the next one in the 1950s was credit cards, right? And so with credit cards, uh, people were now told the pieces of paper that have the government seal on them are now pieces of plastic that have a company number on them, and that's it. But don't worry, you'll get paid eventually. It took almost 50 years for that to become mainstream. You really started seeing it around the middle of the 1980s, and I remember as recently as the early 90s, in most places in Europe, you couldn't pay with a credit card anywhere. Right? I remember coming back from the United Kingdom as a student and visiting Greece, visiting Italy, visiting Spain with my brand new Visa debit card. And boy, was that a disaster, because I couldn't use it anywhere. So, 400 years for the first one, 50 years for the second one. I think we can do Bitcoin in less than 15, maybe 20. We're going to see broad adoption of a form of digital money that will be based on a shared, open, borderless, cryptographic ledger. Whether it's called Bitcoin or something else, I don't know, but it will be broadly based on those ideas. We're in a race. And the reason we're in a race is because governments around the world are trying to ban cash and take us into an 
different digital currency system. A digital currency system with complete surveillance, where the governments and the banks are completely in control, where when you go to the wrong protest, participate in the wrong political party, they flip one bit in the database, and you no longer exist as a person. You are outside of the economic community. Bye-bye. Can't feed yourself. Good luck. Um, I don't want that future, so we'd better get our asses in gear and build some Bitcoin solutions faster. But 15 years, I think we can do it. The good news is we don't need to build out the infrastructure. The internet is already there. Very interesting stuff. And that's it for me today, guys. Now I put it to you. Uh, I want you to go in the comments and type. I think uh, just tell me what you think. You know, Bitcoin. It's going to take probably, you know, ten years. And let me know why. I want to hear what you think. And if you want to be a part of the Altcoin Daily community, feel free to subscribe to the channel. We put out videos every single day. Thank you guys. I'm prepared to hold for 10 years. What about you?